This is a very special equation. 10.1 show that the area of EFGH is given by A of X is equals to 6X squared minus 3X to the power of 4. So let's go ahead and take a look at our equation statement and see how we can potentially solve this equation. So E, uh, let me denote that E F G H is a rectangle as you can clearly see right and then h e is produced x to the power 2 centimeters to n and e h is produced x to the power 2 centimeters to p so we have the distance from h to p being x squared and the distance from e to n being x squared and then the total distance from n to p is four centimeters that's what we that's what we have right let me just erase this so that is the information we have it goes on to say that pg is produced at m to form an isosceles triangle m and p with nm is equals to mp so nm this sign is equals to this sign right so if we have k on this side we also have k on this side right some k units let's carry on and then md is parallel to np uh, we have an angle of 90 degrees there that shows that clearly right and then what else do we have np is four centimeters uh, we can see that from the sketch and md is three centimeters so maybe let's write these three centimeters right there because md is three centimeters if from n to p is four centimeters then from n to d is two centimeters this here is two centimeters is it centimeters yes it is and then from d to p is also two centimeters there we go let's see how we can solve this problem we want the area of e f g h so we know that the area uh it's wanted in terms of x will be equals to the length multiplied by the breadth so do we have the length the length will be our base okay let's take a look the length is e to h so e to h e to h from here at e to h e to h will be equals to four the total length from n to p minus x squared n to e and then minus x squared once more so e to h will be 4 minus 2x squared that is uh, the length so we have 4 minus 2x squared so all we need now is just the breadth and we have solved our problem we have the area in terms of x so um let's get rid of this and or maybe you know we need to include this in as part of our solution uh, you would think so let's leave that there maybe we can put it before um the actual formula for the area let's put it up there right because how did we get the length we need to show that so we have our length we just need our breadth let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to do that so let me erase this we have the length of eh now we just need the length of either ef or the length of gh those are the two things that we need if we get that then we are sorted we are good to go we are going to use the fact that nef is similar to triangle ndm in what way let me show you in ndm we have these 90 degrees here right and then in nef we have this 90 right here so we have two angles that are equals to each other and then they share this angle this is a common angle between the two triangles so what can we say we can say that triangle nef is similar to triangle n d m these two triangles are similar because we have three angles that are equals to each other 
two pairs are equal to each other so the third angle is a bonus right so that's what we have those two triangles are similar to each other if these two triangles are similar to each other then you can say that ne divided by nd is equals to ef divided by d M. We can see that if the two triangles are similar to each other. So let's go ahead and see that. We're saying that NE, uh, well, we can just say NE divided by EF is equal to ND divided by DM, right? So what is NE? NE is X squared. What is EF? EF is B. What we are looking for, the breadth. This is equal to ND. ND is 2 centimeters and DM is 3 centimeters. So we can find the breadth. So we're going to have 2B being equal to 3X squared. Right. So B is equal to 3X squared over 2. So there we go. In place of B, we can replace that with 3X squared over 2. So a the area in terms of x let me just copy that here um 4 minus 2x squared multiplied by 3x squared divided by 2 right so a of x will be equals to 4 multiplied by 3 over 2 so that is 4 multiplied by 12 which is 4 multiplied by 3 which is 12 i'm think uh, i'm already doing the calculation in my head and then divided by 2 should be 6 so we have 6x squared minus minus 2 multiplied by 3 over 2 2 and 2 will cancel out so we're gonna have minus 3x to the power 4 because x squared multiplied by x squared will be x to the power 4 so there we go we have the area of our um, rectangle efgh we are using the fact that the two triangles are similar and proportionality therefore right i wonder if there's another way we can actually solve this question without using the mere fact that the two triangles are similar but anyway just let me know in the comments if you use any other alternative way uh, that is um 10.1 let's take a look at 10.2 so 10.2 says that let's calculate the maximum area of triangle efgh uh, this is the easy equation between the two what is hard is actually finding the area of the uh, rectangle after you do that it becomes quite easy to find the maximum we know exactly what we are going to do uh, we're going to derivate and we're going to equate to zero so a prime of x let's derivate from the get go will be equals to 12x and then 3x to the power 4 if we derivate 3 multiplied by 4 uh, that gives us 12 and then x to the power 3 so we need 12x minus 12x to the 3 to be equals to we need that to be equals to 0 we derivate and we want to find uh, the maximum all right so how do we solve this we can take x as a common factor uh, that becomes uh, pretty much clear um yes we can take x or we can take 12x let's take 12x as a common factor uh, 12x we're going to be left with 1 minus x to the power 2 being equal to 0 so 12x is equal to 0 so here we are saying x is equal to 0 right and then 1 minus x squared is equal to 0 so minus x squared is equal to minus 1 so we are saying that x squared is equal to 1 if you take square root on both sides x is equal to 1 or x is equal to minus 1 so we have two um we have three but let's focus on the two we have two possible answers here x is equal to zero and x is equal to one or minus one we can actually test it out and see which one is going to be the correct answer between these two let's substitute zero into a of x a of x will be well we're substituting zero so we're going to have a of zero when it goes to six multiplied by zero squared minus three multiplied by zero to the power four well this will give us zero i don't think that will be our maximum rather it can be our minimum uh, right i don't think that is going to be our maximum okay so when you substitute 
substitute x is equal to 0, we get 0. Let's substitute x is equal to 1, which will give us the same answer as x is equal to minus 1. So when x is 1, 6, 1 squared, uh, not 6, 1, 9, but 6, 1 squared, and then 3, x is 1, everything to the power 4. So 6, 1 squared, that is 1, so we have 6, minus 1 to the power 4, that is just uh, 1, and then uh, we get 3 centimeter squared. So uh, I think between these two, rather we go with x is equal to 1 or x is equal to minus 1. Because when you substitute 0, we get 0. When you substitute 1, we get 3. I wonder if there's any other value that will give us more than 3. Let me know what you think about this question. I think it was very interesting, most especially 10.1. Which video shall I do next? Let me know in the comments. Here we go.